Okay, thank you. Uh, so I'm Ijo Zhang from Cornell University, and I'll present our, uh, my joint work with Andrew Myers on a language design called Familiar that unifies. Hello? Okay. Language design uh, unifies interfaces, type classes, and the family polymorphism. So interfaces and classes are how object-oriented programming is done uh, in most of the statically type languages. Objects communicate with each other by dynamically dispatching the methods exposed by their interfaces. Meanwhile, uh, type classes and their instances provide useful leverage to generic programming. They were originally proposed for Haskell, but have uh, gained popularity in later language designs. Time classes specify constraints on type parameters, and uh, type class instances satisfy these constraints for specific types. Both styles of programming have acquired a kind of polymorphism called family polymorphism. It appears in various forms in various languages. Uh, with family polymorphism, uh, a group of interrelated types uh, and the classes can co-evolve with their relations managed polymorphically by the mechanism. So given all this desirable expressive power, a natural question is, can we combine all of them into a single language design so that the programmers can have the right set of language features to choose from uh, when, they uh, when they are faced with different programming challenges? A naive combination would result in a language design to have too much linguistic complexity so instead, we want to integrate the different kinds of polymorphism using a small set of language rules, uh, using a small set of language structures and language rules. So for example, it's hard to miss noticing the similarity between interfaces and type classes, as well as the similarity between classes and type class instances. A succinct design would allow us to, uh, to express both with only one pair of these language structures. We also want to support advanced forms of these different kinds of polymorphism. For example, a family, uh, a family polymorphism mechanism typically does not support evolving multiple families at the same time. And a type class mechanism typically does not support multi-methods for binary operations. But unfortunately, I won't have time to talk about how familiar makes them possible, but you can always ask. And finally, our language uh, should stay simple in the simple cases. In other words, the less advanced part of this language ought to be used as a typical OO language like Java when no advanced forms of polymorphism is required. Our language design called Familiar builds on a single interface class mechanism. Interfaces can express both type class constraints and uh, object types and the classes implement those interfaces. Object-oriented polymorphism and the constrained parametric polymorphism both fall out from this reinterpretation of interfaces and classes. And by further allowing both interfaces and classes to be nested and inherited, we arrive at a powerful form of family polymorphism that can be used to organize software at a large scale. And I'll start with interfaces and uh, classes. Familiar allows programs to be written in a familiar object-oriented style. So here, interface vector and class vec look just like any interface or class in Java. We can create objects using classes and invoke methods via interfaces. But unlike most of the previous OO languages, interfaces also define constraints just as type classes do. Interface EQ requires uh, the this type to have an EQ method. So the receiver type of method EQ is this. This is a special type parameter all interfaces in familiar have. And the vector interface uh, we defined earlier is no exception. And like EQ, we can view the vector interface as defining a constraint on the this type. The constraint requires uh, the type being constrained to have the x, y, and eq methods. Uh, 
and we can often emit receiver types, uh, giving us back our good old Java-like interfaces. So we just saw an interface in Familiar defines a constraint on the special type parameter. And correspondingly, a class in Familiar satisfies constraints for some specific type. And here, class norm EQ is declared to satisfy EQ for the vector type. If we view an interface in Familiar as a type class, then a class in Familiar can be viewed as a type class instance. We also say that a class norm EQ adapts the vector type to EQ because it endows the vector type with an EQ method. And similar to interfaces, the receiver types in the class can be elided. And just like normal EQ, uh, the class VEC we defined earlier satisfies its interface vector for some type 2. When fully expanded, class VEC looks like this. It satisfies vector for the structure type formed by its fields. Here we use a nest data type called fields that is bound to the structure type. Class VEC satisfies vector for this nest data type. The field accesses here type check because the receiver this has this nested type, which has the X and the Y fields. The important thing here is that a class in Familia satisfies some constraint for some type. Class vec satisfies vector for a structure type, but vector can also be satisfied for other types, including interface types. And when this type is a structure type, like here, there's no need to define classes in this fully expanded form. And class VEC can be written just as a normal Java class. Interface, when used as the type of an object, can be viewed as an existential type. The corresponding existential value is composed of a representation of some hidden type T and a class that satisfies the constraint 40. Under the hood, object-oriented programming is really using interfaces as constraints. And when we create objects, we are using classes to satisfy those constraints. In addition to objects, there is another natural use of interfaces to define constraints and classes to satisfy constraints. And uh, it's generics. A generic set abstraction. By definition, a set is a collection of distinct objects. We need a set on distinctness. Similar to, uh, to how Haskell type classes are used to constrain types, in Familiar, we can use a where clause where EQ of E to require a notion of equality for the element type E. Interfaces can be extended. Here, interface or <laughs> transitively extends EQ and expresses a ordering on this type. We can then define the interface sorted set by using a where clause constraint order of E to require a total ordering on its element type. Where clause constraints are satisfied using with clauses. For example, we can use our norm EQ to instantiate the set interface. Such a set will consider two vectors equal if they have the same magnitudes. We may also use the natural equality of vectors, which is based on coordinates. The vector interface may have already specified such an EQ method, which is typically the case. And in this case, Familiar will automatically synthesize a class that satisfies EQ for vector. And we call such classes generated for structurally matching interfaces natural classes. We can then use the natural class to instantiate set. A natural class is named using the interface name. So a set of type set of vector with vector uses the natural equality specified by the vector interface. Unlike type class instances, two sets of vectors 
that it uses different notions of equality can coexist in familia. And moreover, uh, as the syntax here suggests, these sets have different types. So it's impossible to confuse them, which is a valuable static guarantee. There's actually a third case about what can be used in a with clause. Consider the interface sorted set we defined earlier. Its super interface is set of E. In its with clause, we use the implicit class variable Familia introduces for the total ordering constraint. And because interface ORD extends EQ, a class for ORD is also a class for EQ. So in the second case, we are using the natural equality of vectors. And in the third case, we are using the equality uh, provided by a where clause constraint. These are the common cases. And in these common cases, there is no need to write out the with clauses because familiar can infer them for us, which makes the common cases really convenient. And now let's think about method calls. Ismember is a generic method that tests if an element E is in a nest L. The highlighted method call here is enabled by the where clause constraint. On the other hand, the highlighted call on the right is a typical object-oriented method call. It's dynamically dispatched based on the actual class of the receiver object. And it turns out that both of these method calls are special cases of a more general form of method calling familiar, which takes an extra class. So here C is that extra class. E0 is the receiver, M is the method name, and the E1 to EN are the other arguments. We call this class the dispatcher because it can be viewed as the dispatch vector providing the method being called. Assuming the dispatcher satisfies some interface I for some type T, the receiver must then have type T because T is the method receiver type in C. Dispatchers are chosen statically with parametric polymorphism, uh, the dispatcher is a class variable introduced for a where clause constraint. And with OO polymorphism, the dispatcher is the natural class automatically generated for the receiver's interface. And in this case, the dispatcher is the natural class generated to satisfy EQ of a vector. While the dispatcher is chosen statically, the actual method code to run is chosen dynamically from the dispatcher. In the case of the OO programming, natural classes actually encode existential unpacking, which is the type theoretic essence of OO dispatch. And since a familiar class can specialize behavior uh, for subtypes, which I don't have time to talk about, class methods are actually multi-methods. And multi-methods are useful to expressing binary operations like equality. In addition to generics and objects, there's a third case that this generalized form of method called unifies, which is uh, adaptation. Adaptation can be used to add new behavior or rebind existing behavior in an object. For instance, we can compare two vectors using a notion of equality other than the natural equality. And of course, parametric polymorphism and uh, object-oriented polymorphism are the common cases. In these common cases, familiar can infer the dispatcher. So there is no need to write them out, giving the programmer a familiar programming experience. Adaptation is the last common case. It's similar to um, extension methods in C-sharp, but it's more expressive. And in familiar, it falls out naturally as a special case of a more general form of method call. So at this point, we have, un uh, so at, uh, at this point, we have united object-oriented programming and a generic programming using a common set of language structures and rules. By further allowing interfaces and classes to be nested and inherited, we can obtain significant expressive power 
that matches or goes beyond most of the previous family polymorphism mechanisms. As a case study, let's consider how to write an extensible data flow analysis framework. A data flow analysis uses a work list algorithm, and it can be characterized by a family of four parameters. The direction that data flow values flow on the control flow graph, the values being propagated, a semi-lattice formed by the values, and uh, the transfer functions associated with each type of AST node. We want to define a generic data flow framework that leaves the four parameters either unspecified or partially specified, so that a specific analysis, such, that, such as a live variable analysis, can be obtained by instantiating or specializing uh, these parameters. One approach is to simply extend the components individually using class inheritance. But this approach uh, would require downcasts, which are error prone because nothing prevents the programmer from mixing things from different families. Another approach is to use explicit parameters but this approach is likely to cause a proliferation of parameters. And if you think you can handle four parameters in this case, then think about uh, the case of an extensible compiler framework, where there are dozens or hundreds of, of interrelated types that need to be extended simultaneously to form language extensions. So this approach is not likely to scale. The problem is addressed elegantly in familiar by family inheritance. We can define a base module called a flow that nests the parameters of a data flow analysis, as well as a generic work list algorithm uh, that is written in terms of these parameters. All the nested definitions in this module become implicit extensibility hooks. A specific analysis, like liveness analysis, can be obtained by extending the base module and then completing the, uh, the definitions of the nested components. Such an extension is, is itself extensible. For instance, we can extend liveness analysis to produce warning messages about unused variables. The code for this is also very intuitive. The sum class here, liveness, extends the base class flow. Since the data flow values in liveness analysis our sets of variables, our subclass liveness binds the nested type value to set of var. The definition of the transfer functions are more interesting. Uh, in the base class, it's defined as an identity function. The transfer class in liveness analysis inherits this default implementation and uh, specializes it to handle the particular types of AST node that play a role in liveness analysis. And at the runtime, the most specific transfer function will be chosen all of the three apply methods based on the actual type of with less than we are able to implement a new program analysis. Polymorphism is known to cause type safety issues for the same reason that downcasts are required uh, when we extend uh, the nested components individually. And following previous family polymorphism approaches, Familia uses path-dependent types to ensure type safety. But as the code here indicates, typically there is no need to write out the paths as they can be inferred by Familia. So the programmer can program in a way that is uh, largely similar to what is in the typical O language modularity and uh, extensibility of family polymorphism. We formalized uh, the key aspects of familia in a core language called a federated familia is type safe. There has been decades of work on language support for extensible and composable software. GDIS is the closest language to familiar in terms of the expressiveness of the generic programming mechanism. However, GNIST uses language constructs like strings and beyond the standard O. And GNIST does not support family polymorphism. 
The approach to family polymorphism in familia is adapted from the JX language. However, JX does not also support parametric polymorphism. Scala uses the concept design pattern and uh, implicits for generic programming, but this approach does not have all the expressive power of genus or familia. Scala also supports family polymorphism via virtual types. And in Scala, it's possible to encode the family inheritance uh, using virtual types. But this design pattern does not seem to scale to a larger setting where we want cross-family inheritance and uh, further binding at arbitrary depth of nesting. So in conclusion, Familia packs a lot of polymorphism and extensibility in a lightweight package. They can be used as an ordinary O language, like Java, when no advanced use of polymorphism is required. And uh, with modest programmer effort, a high degree of, of expressiveness becomes available. And we look forward to, uh, to exploring efficient implementations of Familia in the future. Thank you.